Hello again, Greg from Advanced Fire Systems. Today I want to talk to you about adding a digital communicator to a fire panel. Uh, we'll gather some equipment and uh, walk you through how to put it into the system. So we have our fire panel here and down on the table next to it we have a few items that we're going to need in order to do this. Uh, we've got a small pair of pliers here, a Phillips head screwdriver. We've got the digital communicator and the bag of wires that go with it. Uh, for the uh, SEB card up here, we've got the standoff, uh, the screws to put it in place, and then the two ribbon cables that uh, marry that unit to the panel. Okay, we've opened up the fire panel. We can see inside right here on the sidewall. This is a CTL 2V series panel. It's a larger panel. We're going to mount the digital communicator here on the sidewall. And then down here in the lower left corner, we're going to install the SCB card. We'll also have to put the standoff in place in order to hold that down so that it doesn't fall out. Okay, we're back. I've taken the liberty of powering down the panel so that I can pull off the ribbon cable for the display so that we can get it out of our way. And then we're going to come down here to our SEB card. On the back of the SEB card here, you'll notice that there is a socket that will plug into the main motherboard here. We'll notice that there's a 6-pin connector and also a 5-pin connector. We'll put the two ribbon cables into those, and then those will get installed onto the digital communicator. We use the 5-pin on the header that points in the opposite direction of all others, and the 6-pin is pretty explanatory in that it goes to the one that has 6 pins. Be back with you in a moment while I'll prepare this equipment. Okay, as we can see here, I put the standoff in place, gave it a little twist, got it ready to go. I've also got my digital communicator here, and I've got the SEB card and the ribbon cables all attached. And if we look closely at the digital communicator and the upper left hand corner, right hand corner rather, there is the screw hole, and that will be the one where we mount into the way back corner, back in there. Uh, and that is the screw that we have to put in that grounds out the digital communicator. The other remaining posts are just snap-ons, so give me a moment, we'll put that in place. Okay, I have the digital communicator in place, and the last thing that I need to do would be is to put the screw. Uh, we'll ground out that cabinet, and notice as I'm putting that in that I've got the ribbon cables nice like so. Uh, slid down along the side of the main motherboard and then what we'll do is we'll take the SEB card and plug it into the socket. Once it's into the socket, we'll put it like so. There is also a screw that needs to hold that in place. So there's the unit in this location and we'll see right down here there's the screw hole there. Now I've also tucked the ribbon cables nicely over to the side so we still have access to the USB port for programming the panel. Now allow me a moment, I'll get this ready. Okay, the SCB is in place, and I'm just tightening up the screw to hold it down where it needs to be so that it doesn't come out. And then once this is ready to go, then we'll have to do is tell the fire panel that it has a digital communicator, and then we'll program the digital communicator up Okay, while I was working there, I took a moment to step out to my van and I grabbed the DACT programming unit and I also grabbed my telephone butt set so that I can test the phone lines. And when I say test the phone lines, just wanted to point out to you that these fuses right here, right below the phone blocks, there and there, these are actually tip and ring for line two and tip and ring for line one. If you clip on your butt set into that location, you should be, when you have active phone lines, you should be able to call the central station, verify that you can get there, and get the handshake from the receiver. And that'll ensure that you do actually have phone lines all the way to the digital communicator. As you can see, I had connected on, and I called the central station, and I got the information that I needed. Uh, I'll write that down so that I know what to uh, program the unit up, and then we'll do so. All right, I called my central station. Uh, I have the account number, as you can see, 7705. They gave me the two phone lines for the receivers, 
and they also gave me a test time to program into it so that it tests anywhere between 5 and 9 a.m. at their request. All right, with the digital communicator all installed and the SEB card back and installed, I put the ribbon cable back in for the display, powered up my panel, and plugged in the batteries and brought my panel back online. As you can see on the inside, the digital communicator is pulsing heartbeat light, which is good. And we look at the outside of the panel, and we can see that the panel is up and running and in the normal state right now. All right, I'm ready to program my DAC. I'm going to plug in the DAC programmer, and I'm going to plug it into the 5-pin connector here on the uh, SEB card. And when I do that, I want to watch the DAC programmer itself. And what I'm looking for is that it's the version 1.09 Magic Dialer firmware. Okay, once that's in, what we need to do is to program the time. And that would be, we'll hit the zero for program, and then we'll program time, which is the one button. And we want to do the system time. Okay, and the first thing it's going to ask us is the month, day, year. Today is March. 25th of 2020, so 0, 3, 2, 5, 2, 0, and you hit the command to save it. Then you can hit the clear button one time. Now it's asking us for the time. The time is approximately 10 o'clock in the morning, so we'll put in 1, 0, 0, 0, and again hit the command button to save it and then hit clear. So we can see that it's March 25th, 2020 at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now the next thing we need to do is to set up the test time because they asked us to have the test time between 5 and 9 a.m. So we'll come back over here to the auto test which I believe is option number two. So we'll go into option two, automatic test, test time. That's the number one and it's asking us for the time. So we're just gonna go with 512 AM. So I'll just enter the number 0, 5, 1, 2, and hit the command button. And then I'll hit the clear. So that's the time. Now the frequency defaults itself, the frequency defaults itself to 24 hours. So I'm good with that at this point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is hit the clear button a couple of times here, and we'll back ourselves out of that level and what I need to do next is I need to program in the account numbers okay so I'm gonna hit one more back out and I'm looking for the number five which I believe is program accounts so I'll choose five for accounts and account numbers number one for the account number one and that again as it was said seven seven zero five so I'll enter in that number. Please note that the number up here, one, two, three, four, is a default that goes into the machine. But we will enter in seven, seven, zero, five, and hit the command. And notice how it changes it up in the upper right. So that did line one, so we'll hit the clear. Now we'll do the two for line two. Again, there's that default number, but we'll put in seven, seven, zero, five, and hit the command. I'll hit the clear again. So that gets our two account numbers in. Next thing we need to do is we need to hit the, we need to put the phone numbers in. So we see that number two is for the phone numbers. So I'll enter number two, phone line number one. So I'll hit the one button. When we do that, we need to enter in, and again, there's some default numbers that just go in there. Notice all the question marks, those are fine. So we knew that the number we were given for central station receiver one is one eight five five four seven two three nine five zero to save it we hit command then we'll hit clear so that gets line one in next one we'll do is line two that number of course was different one eight five five four seven two three nine five one and hit command to save it now we'll look at that we'll clear out of this 
I'm going to go back to number one. I'm just going to verify the number 855 472 3950. And that is correct. And notice the other one is exactly the same except it's 3951. So we'll clear. We'll look at number two and verify the number 855 472 3951. So we're good with the numbers. Now the only thing we need to do beyond that is to set the line control. So we'll back up a couple of times. And what we're looking for is phone control. So that is three. So we'll hit the three button. So phone line one, so we'll hit number one. And currently it's defaulted at SIA. We're going to use contact ID for our central station because that's what they asked us. And notice that the three was contact ID. So if I hit the three button, followed by the command, the area in the parentheses in the upper left corner, sorry, upper right corner, changes to contact ID. So line one is set for contact ID. Now the next thing we'll do is hit the clear. We'll do this for line number two. So two is currently at SIA, so we'll hit the three button, hit the command, and you can see it changed to contact ID. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now what we're done, we've taken care of all of that information. So the last thing we need to do is to back completely out of programming. So we'll hit the clear button three or four times, maybe even five. Heard the triple beep and it's all done. Just simply remove the cable for the, for the DAC programmer. Okay, our digital communicator has been programmed. Now what we need to do is tell the fire panel that it has a digital communicator attached to it and that it's going to send the data stream of contact ID, and we're going to use contact ID by point to the digital communicator. So what we need to do is to get into programming, you will need to know your password. Mine, I just defaulted it at 1111, but again, you know what your password is. So the way we do, we'll come in and hit menu, and then we'll hit six for program, and we'll hit one for program there, and our password is one, 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 followed by the check mark. You'll know that you're in programming. If you look down here, you'll see that the programming light has turned on. So we're in programming, and where we need to do is we need to go to the next menu. Now, the next menu is already highlighted, so just simply hit the check mark, and we'll go to the next screen. What we want to do is we want to go to setup on the next screen, so I'll hit the up arrow, and then we'll hit the check mark and we'll enter into setup. Now in setup, you scroll down, it's like eight or 10 down in this menu and you'll see that it says DAC. And right now the DAC will actually have a X mark in its location. And what we're going to do is find that and there it is popping up and highlight that level. Now there are four options under DAC, of course it's the X Next one will say external. We hit it again and it'll say contact ID by zone. Notice that it says zone. We don't want zone, we want by point. Next option is SIA. And then finally it says contact ID by PNT. That's point. We're all set with that. All we have to do is hit the escape button three, four times. Then we'll go up and hit the three button to exit followed by our password and hit the check mark. We are out of programming and we can see all the lights are off and the system is back to normal. And that's all we have to do in order to put that into the system. Now one last thing I wanted to mention to you and I know it's a little difficult to see but you can see that there's a jumper right here. It has an on and an off. Now, if you needed to upload and download to the fire panel, you would make sure that this would be put in the off position so that you can interrupt the communications from the motherboard to the digital communicator so that you can talk through the USB port. But normal condition, you would put it in the run or the right-hand side. Well, thank you for joining us today and learning how to put a digital communicator into the fire alarm system. We'll be back and talk with you later on about some other stuff that we have. Check back often and see what we've put up there. Take care and have a wonderful day.